Ruby was a gift for a retired couple, but she's no gym. Our pet trainer 911 is here to polish up her behavior. Is your pet's behavior driving you nuts? Our pet vet may have the cure. Plus, if two's company and three's a crowd, then what's four? With Ralph House, it's one crazy party. All that and how to live eco-friendly with your pet. This time on Animal Attractions. Oh, this little baby. The camera just loves you. <gasps> Yay! That's great, Casey. Good girl. How many pictures do you have? According to a recent survey, 39% of all pet owners, now that's almost half, said that they have more pictures of their pets than their spouse or significant other. Hi, I'm Krishanda Lee, and welcome to Animal Attractions TV, the show devoted to making sure that both you and your pet have the best possible life together. Now, I know we all love taking pictures of our pets and remembering the good times, but what happens when the good times aren't so good? And even worse, what happens when your supposed best friend ends up physically harming you? Well, fortunately for this couple and their pet, we have Coach Ronald White, our pet trainer 911. Ruby was an anniversary present for Earl and Maggie Means. But Ruby is no gem. In fact, she's a menace on a mission to destroy. If she doesn't stop biting, stop pulling, and running amok, she could end up like thousands of unruly dogs. Another sad statistic surrendered to the pound. I retired at the end of last year, and um, my husband is getting ready to retire, and so the children said that I needed something to do, that I didn't, they thought I had too much time on my hands, and so therefore I should get a dog. We've had three dogs and did very little training, and for some reason, Ruby needed training, and we did the best we could, but it wasn't nearly enough, so we realized we needed some special training. As a teacher, I taught kindergarten through fifth and I could have as many as 30 children in a classroom with that variety of ages and I had absolutely no trouble uh, with the discipline and I could give instructions and they would be followed and it was a rude awakening when I got Ruby and I gave instructions and nothing happened <laughs> so I have had to adjust to her lack of discipline well, when we got the dog, I, I thought, you know, especially getting it at Valentine's Day, that we really were going to get the sweetest dog, and it was going to be just a pleasure to have this dog, but in, instead, she has turned out to be the dog from hell. She jumps on me and bites me. She would take my clothes and pull them and tear them. If we leave her out, it's gangbusters for her. She chews up the siding on the house. She has pulled up every flower that I had on my patio and has broken innumerable pots or chewed them up. It's been very discouraging. I cannot take four steps out of the door before she starts down, down. jumping up no. high and grabbing the plastic bag of garbage. I would open the door and she would barrel into the house and start going through the garbage. She would growl at me and snap at my hands as I was trying to pull her out. She was really unruly, and so it's been a very unpleasant beginning. I just came in one day after she had bitten me and torn my clothes for the last time <laughs> that I came in and said, this dog's going to the pound. I will not keep her. I was at my wit's end. I just cannot have this dog anymore. And we were really there until a friend told us about uh, Ronald White. Well, when I got the call about Ruby the Black Lab, the lady told me that the dog was uh, out of control, and she was beyond 911. She needed help right now. And could I come tomorrow? Good morning. How you doing, Ronald Welcome. White? Welcome, Earl Means. Hi, I'm Maggie Means. How so you glad doing? to see you. Would you like to come in and meet Ruby? Yes. Okay. The dog was too much for him. He was a, a young dog, wanted some attention, wanted to play, and uh, 
Yeah, you know, they were they were just older, and they can still play with the dog, but that dog wanted more than still than they can give that dog. Has her her moments. Uh -huh. You have that list that I had you to make out? Yeah, yes, I do. Yeah. Well, the longer the better. Okay. Okay, let's see here. Okay, the jumping, the biting, she pulls on a leash, runs off, uh, jumping at the back door. Yeah, that's a long list, I know, but do you think she's a lost cause? Oh, no. Uh -uh. What are we going to do? I'm going to take your dog back to boot camp for 30 days. Oh. And train your dog. What your dog's going to do with, okay. with you is going to do with me. Okay. And then we train you for seven days. Oh, wonderful. And when I come to your house to train you and your husband, uh -huh. when I leave, the dog leaves. So now I'm trying to train the owners. Well, uh, the and I'm sure that we need training. <laughs> so. yeah, and once you train, the uh -huh. dog will stay trained. Okay. Well, thank you so much, and we look forward to okay. seeing you. It was nice meeting you. Good luck. Good luck. Bye, Ruby. Behave. <laughs> At seven months, the dog was ready to come to boot camp. So I told her I was going to take her dog, train him for 30 days, train her for seven. When I leave, the dog leaves. And she'll see when I bring the dog back, he'll be well trained. So when I bring the dog to the house, I play with him out in the front yard. But they, they, they told me the dog didn't play with other dogs. Come on, let's go. So I wanted to see what, whether he socialized, whether he friendly, or whether he tuck his tail and run from it. So that kind of told me about the dog. So when I let him out, I played with him. He came to me. He was real friendly with me and lovable. But when I let the other puppies out to play with him, he would tuck his tail and run because he wasn't used to the other dogs. He wasn't used to being around his own kind. A couple of days of playing with other dogs, he had jumped right in the game with them. So after I get done playing with the dog and he's here seven days, I'll take him and uh, I introduce him to the pinch collar. And so I made the switch. And I gently showed the dog and let him feel it. And he would look at me and I would give him a treat. And I would work him slow until he knows his commands and just walk him, introduce him to the pinch collar. Well, in this particular case, because they were senior citizens, and uh, I just wanted the dog to listen to him on a hand signal. Well, basically with the hand signals, we don't say anything to him. I'll keep the leash in my left hand. And if I tell him to stop, I'll pull straight back and I'll wave my hand in front of him and then he'll look at me and then for sit I'll slightly take my left hand and pull up and raise up with my right hand to show him sit and down I'll pull down and I'll wave down and stay I'll put in front of him and walk away from him and I'll repeat that but I won't say nothing to him he's looking at me because he thinks I have something for him and I do in the beginning I used the hand signals the voice and the hand signals. Stop. And then eventually I just do strictly Sit. hand signals on him. Sit. Therefore the Stay. husband can do hand signals and the wife if she wants to Stay. can do voice. The dog's gonna listen to both of them. One of the things Maggie uh, wanted to do was to iron in her in her kitchen and have her dog sitting there with her. And she couldn't do it. So I'll bring the dog home and that was on the list. Oh. So I'll set up an iron and my daughter Sit. will iron and see what she messed with the, the dog, would mess with the uh, cable, Sit. the cord, and uh, train the dog for when he goes home, the dog doesn't do it over there either. The dog is listening to me and doing all that she's supposed to do. Well, then I know that she's ready to go back home. So I'll call them up and ask them, are they ready to be trained? And if they say yes, we're on our way over there. When Coach came back with Ruby and showed the results, I was shocked. Oh, hi, Coach. Stop. Sit. Stay. Oh. Well, there's your, uh, your puppy, and uh, we're going to show you how he's trained mm -hmm. and how he'll listen to you and stay there and uh, do his commands. And what he'll do for me, he'll do for you. Are you sure that's Ruby? I, it doesn't look like the same dog. It's so well mannered. Yeah, that's what training does the structure and uh, sending him away. Good. Well, they thought Ruby was the lost cause, and I knew her being a lab. She wasn't. She was just young. You put this in this hand. Okay. Oh, this right here. Oh, that. And this right here. Right there. Right. Now he walks on your left, and you're going to keep your hand down, and you're going to start walking. You say, heel, start walking towards me. Say, heel, heel. start walking. Heel. Just start walking, just start walking. Heel. Say heel, give me a little pull. Heel. Give me a little pull. Heel. There you go. Now go back that way, say heel. Heel. Keep walking. Heel. 
Straight that way. Heel. Now turn back towards me. Say heel. Heel. Back towards me. Heel. Keep walking. There you go. I heel. want you to say stop. Stop. Now tell him sit. Sit. There you go. Now the final thing that I do before he goes home, I'll take him out here to the beach or to a restaurant where I can sit outside to get the dog used to people stepping over him, going around him, socializing him with people. For when they take him places, he'll be obedient. All right, how you doing? And he won't have to stay in the backyard all by himself and be lonely. Coach has been a, such a gift to us. When he brought her back, I thought, this isn't our dog. She was calm, she was obedient, she was a real pleasure. And the more she's in the house with you, mm -hmm. the better it's gonna get. Okay. And the older she gets, the better. She's just a puppy. Right. If you have any problems, you uh, give me a call. Okay. And I know the dog just like you do, because I trained her. Right, okay, well okay. thank you so uh, much. You know, it nice it's been a pleasure. Thank okay. you so much. She's just seven months old, but she's come a long way, and we have 10 more years, 12 more years, possibly more with her, and we're looking for a great, bright future. Uh, so pleasantly surprised when uh, Coach brought her back, and she was a thrill to have. Uh, she obeyed, she was uh, a companion, and she is now uh, the dog that I, I wanted, uh, always dreamed of having, and I think that now, I will keep her. <laughs> I will not have to uh, send her to the pound like I threatened. Uh, I think I'm going to enjoy her for many, many years. According to the Environmental Protection Agency, Americans go through 2.5 million plastic bottles every hour. Not per year, per hour. Can you believe that? That's like millions of tons of plastic every single year. And the sad part about all of this is, we only recycle about 5% of it. So, we here at Animal Attractions TV wanted to share some ways that you can go eco-friendly with your pets in mind, starting with recycled plastic. We found that there are many new products out there, from park benches to this dog bed. Now you'll be happy to know that over 16 2-liter plastic bottles were kept out of landfills with just this one bed. Now that means that over 80% of this dog bed was made from recycled plastics. That's really good. Now did you know that there were pet toys that were eco-friendly too? It's really cute. <laughs> Amelie's toy is made with organic fabrics and natural dyes. It's non-toxic, saliva resistant, and safe for your pet and won't pollute the environment. And you'll definitely want to check the labels when looking for words like natural and organic and environmentally safe. Even the best trained pets can make mistakes every now and then. And it's usually because we're a little late at getting home with enough time for their potty break. Mm-hmm. So we can all benefit from ways of learning how to neutralize pet odors in a way that's safe for everyone. With a few standbys that you can buy at the grocery store. Bacon soda and vinegar. First, Remove the pet waste as best as you can. An old hand towel makes a great blotter for soaking up liquid that is soaked into carpets. Then, use a little water with fabric safe soap to dilute and remove as much of the urine as possible. Rinse and blot the area well to remove excess moisture. Next, apply straight white vinegar to the area. Rub in well and allow to dry until area is just damp. After the vinegar is nearly dry, sprinkle baking soda liberally to the damp area and allow to dry completely. Once dry, vacuum thoroughly. Now what happens when your pet does go in the correct place, like let's say their litter box? Yes, there are eco-friendly alternatives. Today, some cat liners are made with plant-based materials like corn or wheat or recycled newspaper or wood chips, and each has a unique texture. Some are hard, and some are soft, and some are a little in between. Something for every finicky feline. Also, look for biodegradable cat pan liners. Now this cat pan liner is 100% biodegradable. Come on, sweetheart. Newspapers can be used to scoop up after your dog after long walks. Or you can use biodegradable dog waste bags like this. You ready to go? Let's go, Amelie. Few things are nicer than a sweet-smelling, clean pet. Even though bathing them isn't always an easy job, 
At least there's some comfort in using a pet shampoo that is safe for your pet and also for the earth. Now this pet shampoo is made with all natural products. Plus, the packaging is 100% recyclable as well. Now, if you're feeling adventurous, you can make your own pet shampoo. Now I happen to like this aloe vera based formula. Not only is it cleansing to the pet, but it's soothing to them as well. Plus, it's super duper easy to make. Here are the ingredients you'll need. Two cups of water, two tablespoons of liquid Castile soap, which you can find at your local natural foods market. Two tablespoons of aloe vera gel, which you can find in your local grocery store or drugstore. By the way, aloe vera has healing properties that may help with any skin irritations. Up to one teaspoon of vegetable glycerin or vegetable oil, which you can find at your local grocery store. And last, combine all the ingredients in a jar or a bottle and give it a thorough shake. And that's it. Now as we've seen, there are quite a lot of pet products out there that are great for the environment. From shampoos, to pet beds, to pet toys, all made with natural ingredients. Now if you're excited about going eco-friendly, you will find many ideas plus great tips on our website at AnimalAttractionsTV.com. Plus a recipe for a fabulous vinegar rinse that can give your pet a shiny healthy coat. Now by the way, it's always good to consult with your veterinarian before using new products just to make sure that your pet doesn't have any allergies. Then you're all set to do your part for the environment plus helping your pet be healthy at the same time. Whether the exotic sleek body or the original rounded shape, the Siamese cat has claims to ancient celebrity that even Lassie would envy. Temple cats, companions to kings, even deified in the Far East for centuries. But today's owners will tell you that although they're very loving, Siamese cats still exhibit that royal manner and will rule any household they set foot in. The Siamese cat originated in Siam, which is now Thailand, and that's where they got their name from. The first time a Siamese cat was seen outside of Siam was when it was given to an ambassador of England, and then from there it started showing up in other parts of the world. Because the Siamese cat is so distinctive, it started appearing in cat shows and started showing up in the United States about 1900s. Ancient Oriental legend says the Siamese cat got its coloring when one was touched by a god who left his sacred mark. The dark markings, such as on the ears, the paws, and the tail, are due to a pigment in their fur that attracts to the colder parts of their body to be darker so that it attracts more heat. The National Cat Association considers there to be four pedigree colors. The seal point, which is more what this is, a chocolate point, which is more brown. Then you have a blue and a lilac. My most favorite feature of the Siamese cat is their eye color. It's a very piercing light blue color that is distinctive to all Siamese cat purebreds. And that's what most people recognize most other than the coat is their eye color. The Siamese cat has a great personality. They're very loving, very smart, very playful. They like to be up high. They like to be able to look down. And they say if you can't find your cat on the ground or in a chair, look up to your highest point and you'll most likely find them sleeping or watching you from there. They're very loud. Um, they voice their opinions, whether they're happy, hungry, can't find you. Um, I have two cats and they're about a year apart and they love to play with each other. They play with me, anybody who comes in, they're very inquisitive. They'll always come up to somebody first before running away, smell them, make sure that they're friendly, and then go about playing or whatever they want. They're also noted to be bossy, aristocratic, um, probably from back when they were a temple cat. They will kind of try to run the show if you let them. So if you don't mind being subject to her will, the Siamese will reward you with all the affection she thinks you deserve. Hey, 
Anxiety in dogs is a common cause of concern for pet owners. Dogs can be anxious or afraid any time they're exposed to something new. There is a period of time early in a dog's development when they learn about what to expect in their environment. New things that they aren't used to can seem to pose a threat. Although the best solution is prevention, should the problem arise, there are some things you can do at home. You can work with your dog to gradually expose them to the threatening stimulus and praise them when they show signs of being relaxed or being curious. Another cause of anxiety in dogs is a phobia to thunderstorms, fireworks, or other loud noises. If you know your dog has a noise phobia and you have the time to prepare, take your dog for a walk before the noise starts and let them go to the bathroom. Pets that are more severely affected may need to be put in their crate if they are trying to escape or are potentially a danger to themselves. If this is not enough, there are medications and homeopathic remedies that are available through your veterinarian to help with this problem. Another common cause of canine anxiety is called separation anxiety. In this case, a dog may experience anxiety or stress when separated from their human counterparts. Unfortunately, these dogs will sometimes engage in problem behaviors as a result of their anxiety. However, as unpleasant as this may be for the owner, it is important to remember that this is not done out of spite, but out of their feelings of stress and anxiety. In severe cases, it is highly recommended to seek the help of a trainer. But in more mild cases, there are some things you can do at home. First of all, and this is a good thing for anyone with a dog, don't make leaving or coming home a big deal. Making a big deal of this teaches the dog to be concerned that you are leaving and that the best time of the day is when you come home. Keep this interaction low key and they will be calmer about it too. It is also good to gradually desensitize them to being left alone. In brief, go about your normal routine for leaving, but don't leave. Repeat this until the dog is no longer reacting with anxiety. Then add in a very short departure. Gradually repeat this with longer and longer intervals until your dog is no longer stressed about you leaving. If you want to know more information about anxiety, visit our website at animalattractionstv.com. We all love the idea of having a best friend, but why stop at one? Some say the more the merrier. Well, at Ralph Howes' home, it's the more the crazier. I want to introduce you to some of my best buds. Come here. Um, whoa. Um, all right, this is Heath. And Heath and Benji, they're named after the um, world famous, um, at least in Tennessee, football quarterback and his brother, Heath and Benji Schuler. They got their name. They were born during the Heath Schuler era at UT. Come here, Annie. Come here. This is Annie. She's the mother of Heath and Benji. Yeah, she's black and they're white. And she's a good dog. And this is Polo. Come here. Come here, Polo. Polo. Come here. Wow. <laughs> Come here, Polo. Um, this is Polo. This is the one I've had forever. He's like 14. <laughs> I don't have a favorite. They're all, they're all my favorites. You can't say you like one more than the other. They all have their own personalities, and um, they're good company. I enjoy coming home and having somebody sitting there waiting on you and looking up at you and probably waiting on their food, not me, but, but you know, they're, they're good dogs. I didn't intend on ever having four dogs. It just happened that way. But um, three as compared to four. I had three before. Three, they're kind of dogs and they, they sit around and they follow you. Four, they, they run you pretty much. You know, if they want to go do something like that, um, they do it. My dad's a pianist, and he noticed when he started playing the piano, they would sing with him. I was watching the, um, this is a funny story, the Super Bowl one year, and I think it was um, Kathy Lee Gifford was singing the national anthem, and I was sitting there on the couch, and she starts her singing, and Polo was asleep, and all of a sudden, woo! He starts going. Every year, my holiday tradition is the Christmas card is the dogs and myself, and everybody 
we try and outdo it every year. Um, and they've been with reindeer antlers, they've been um, on the beach, they've been in the pool, um, they've been up in the mountains, they've been under the tree, they've been on the tree, you know, it's kind of different things like that, so it's, it's been a lot of fun. The year I had the puppies was kind of rough too. I had, um, at that year I had seven dogs that were in the shot and um, had taken them to a, a friend of mine, a, a guy I had worked with that was a photographer and he didn't like, which was really funny, he didn't like to shoot kids or animals. So when I walked in with seven dogs, his name is Duffy, he was like, he's going, Ralph, what have you done to me this time? I said, well, it's no kids, it's no ice cream, it's no food, I said, it's just dogs. So we shot for about an hour and got a lot of good shots out of it. So that was a pretty good shoot. They really like to ride in the car. Um, one reason is every Sunday morning they get a special treat. I'll take them down to the closest fast food restaurant and go to the drive-thru and they all know them there. And they get their, um, they get their treats just like I get mine. I get my big breakfast, they get their big breakfast or hot cakes and sausage and um, enjoy that. And then we have to get back here and split it all up and they all get it and they eat it up like big dogs. <laughs> Um, had a lady that worked with me and she had two cats and I got two cats. We got them at the same time and then our cats names were Zip and Dee Doo Da. I had Doo and Da and she had Zip and Dee. But other than that I've always had a dog. The dogs and the cats and in, in the Hawes family are pretty much a part you know, of the family just like anybody else. I love these dogs. I mean as much as you can love anything I probably love these dogs. Thank you for joining us for this episode of Animal Attractions. I hope you've had fun and maybe even learned a few things. If you'd like more information, you can check us out on the web at www.animalattractionstv.com. See you next time. Right, buddy? Oh, yeah.